it's worse than we thought. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. In our lead story today, consumer demand is crashing at the fastest rate since the pandemic. It's so bad, it's down to levels that we haven't seen since the pandemic. We're gonna take a look at what's going on in the factory sector that's indicating that this demand is crashing and what it needs to see to turn around. Plus, we've got more signs the labor market is cooling off, but it's still holding steady. And we're gonna give you some reasons why the labor market is about to crack and layoffs are likely to skyrocket. Plus, we've got an update from the Federal Reserve, and with no surprise, they raised rates a quarter percent, but that's just the beginning. Let's over to Bloomberg, where we picked today's story up with a headline. U.S. factory gauge falls for the fifth month to the lowest since May of 2020. The Institute for Supply and Management's gauge of factory activity fell for a fifth straight month in January to 47.4, the weakest since May 2020. Again, the key date there, May of 2020. Remember, the economy was shut down and less than the median estimate. Readings below 50 indicate a contraction. Now, what I want you to understand about this ISM data is just because we're seeing a contraction doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. So let's think of it in terms of emotion. So when you have an expansion or an ISM over 50, it means you're happy. Now, if you see a number over 60, it means you're euphoric. You know, maybe you got that big raise you wanted, or maybe something really exciting in your life has happened and you are floating on cloud nine. Now, let's put it in perspective. Just because it falls below 50 and you see a contraction doesn't mean something horrible is happening. It just means you're perhaps sad. Maybe your favorite sports team lost. Maybe you didn't get the promotion you were hoping for. Maybe you did bad on a test. Something that isn't major and you're actually sad for a bit. Now you get below 45 in the factory gauge. Now we're talking an emotion of depression. So at 47, a contraction makes sense here because the economy is way overheated and it's been contracting slowly for five months now. The risk we're watching for is if it falls below that critical 45 level, because then if it does, then all bad things are coming true. The latest data released on Wednesday today underscores how a combination of rising interest rates, we'll look at that in a moment, waning demand for merchandise, we knew that was coming, and economic uncertainty are weighing on factory activity. And let's first talk about this interest rate issue because you know there is something to this, but perhaps not as much as the Federal Reserve wants. Now, is it true that when interest rates go up, people tend to borrow less money and consume less. It is, but in a healthy economy, if wages are rising and there's economic prosperity, then consumers can absorb higher interest rates. It's not a big deal. It's only during a weak economy do we actually see that higher interest rates cause a problem here. So let's take a look at the Philly Fed new orders data here, because what we're seeing in the ISM data, which we'll get to in a moment, is the new orders are outright crashing. That is the demand issue. And let's look at what effect the federal funds rate may have. So here we can see the federal fund rate in red against the current new orders diffusion index for the Philly Fed, our proxy for the ISM. And we can notate that or note when the federal funds rate rises, it does tend to slow off, slow down new order demand, but it tends to slow it down to a fairly neutral point. And we can see that happen over and over again. But I want you to see here, what I really want you to note is when the blue line continues to crash well below the black line, you see it happening here where the gray shaded parts are indicating a recession, what do you know that's happening with the federal funds rate? It's decreasing. So what's happening here, what I want you to understand what the Fed's trying to do is they're trying to tap on the brakes, although fairly aggressively, because they've really raised rates really fast here, and they're hoping just to slow down the economy. But what happens at some point is either they missed their target or maybe it didn't matter what they were doing, and the pedal goes straight to the floor and the economy grinds to a halt. That's what you see in the data here, and that's what happens when the Fed has to cut rates. It's because for whatever reason, whether they went too far or the economy just wasn't turning around enough, just it was slowing down too fast, that's the indicator we're seeing. 
Now let's put it in an issue of demand because we can actually see demand slowing down. We knew this. Now we're going to overlay crude oil or West Texas intermediate in red against those current new orders for the Philly Fed. And what can we see typically and not always, but crude oil gives us an impression of where demand is going because when energy prices fall, it tells you demand from the economy is waning. And the further it falls, the less demand there is. So keep that in mind as we look at this chart. But again, it doesn't always happen because we can see here going into the great financial crisis, oil prices rose, demand slowed, and then next thing you know, they both came crashing down. We can see here in going to the dot-com bubble, energy prices fell, demand went down. We can see here in 2018 through 2020, oil prices headed lower, demand started to slow down, and now we see oil prices down and demand is falling as well. So what we should be looking at now going forward is what's going on in the crude oil market. And of course, we got inventory data today and it wasn't good. Here you can see crude oil inventories rose 4 million barrels. Cushing, which is your proxy, goes into gasoline prices, 2.31 million barrel build. Distillates or jet fuel up 2.3 million barrels. Gasoline inventories up almost 2.6 million barrels. So if you're looking at the economy, you can look at the energy market and you can get a really good idea of what's going on with demand. And what we're seeing from the energy market, particularly crude, is demand is waning. Now we're seeing that start to fold into the new orders. The ISM gauges for both orders and production. So again, new orders. Production is how much was going on in the factory slip further into contraction territory. So what we're seeing here is demand for new orders is falling and the amount of production coming out of a factory is falling as well. And that would make sense because new orders should lead production. If new orders are rising, production should fall higher. If new orders are going down, we should indeed see production falling. And here we can break down the manufacturing at a glance for the ISM survey today, and we can see new orders. Now we're in depression territory. They're below that key number of 45, so that is a huge indicator. We'll get into this, what it means for employment in a little bit. No surprise, production is falling, falling lower, but notably employment is holding steady at 50, seeing it's unchanged. As we mentioned, a lot employers went out and hired a whole bunch of people. They've trained them. They're holding out to see if the economy turns around around here before they start to lay off. That is the risk we're facing is what happens if the economy doesn't turn around. Supplier delivery times are in contraction. That is how fast suppliers are getting to the factory. Inventory levels at factories are now neutral, holding steady. Prices paid, you'll see it says, hey, it increased, but on net prices are decreasing. That is due to gasoline prices likely rising. So let's continue here because the ISM measure of prices paid, there we go, for materials increased for the first time in nearly a year. Again, I believe this mostly due to gasoline prices rising. How are the figures still suggesting? just easing inflationary pressures because it is indeed contracting. The employment measure indicated a modest increase in headcount at the month that's consistent with economist median forecast of 6,000 or more manufacturing jobs coming in Friday's report. They're also predicting 190,000 for the payroll report. And again, a lot of this is going to be in the services sector. And what we want to see is manufacturing jobs. They usually pay better. They have benefits. They're more stable. We're not seeing that side of the economy grow because demand from the consumer is waning. And again, one of the leading indicators we can look at is a crude oil market and see where it's going. Of course, this leads everyone to keep wondering why doesn't the market sell off if the factory sector data is saying things are bad it's because momentum is up and here's our report from the cta timer pro i'm going to raise the price to 30 bucks tomorrow but i want you to see here on today's report this is page one it breaks down into a bunch of etfs of how the machines look at the market based on a historic weighting and you can see the fast machines now should lo start looking at this market and say if price doesn't turn up real fast they're going to back off their long positions but notably, you don't see any major change in the U.S. indices of them backing off their positions. And that's what we see here is the U.S. market is momentum driven. 20 bucks, link in description, going to 30 tomorrow. Now let's look at the labor market here because what's coming here is a, it's about to crack wide open. I'm going to give you the case why we're going to see layoffs likely surge in the coming months unless there's a major change in consumer demand. U.S. firms scale back hiring amid inclement weather, ADP data shows. 
Private payrolls rose 106,000 last month, not normally a fairly decent number. According to figures out today, the number trailed all estimates as estimates were hoping for a bigger number. But payrolls were head, held back by declines in businesses with fewer than 50 employees and goods producing industries like mining and construction also shed jobs. So again, on the forefront here, what you're seeing is small employers are saying, whoa, demand here is a problem. And they're starting to get rid of people. We already knew that the goods producing sector, they have not been hiring very many. Most of the jobs are going right into the services sector, at least for the time being. Regionally, the biggest drops were in the Midwest where severe winter storms roiled most of the region, and that does impact hiring. And here we can see, here is the case. If the economy doesn't turn around, if consumers don't get out and spend, what we're gonna see is layoffs increase. Here we have the four week moving average of initial claims overlaid against that current new orders from the Philly Fed diffusion index. And we can note that in periods where new orders collapse, again, demand collapse, the employers have no choice, but at some point to start laying off people. Here we see that same collapse in demand. The difference is, again, as I said, they hired a whole bunch of people and they're actually optimistic that the economy is going to turn around. So much so the job openings, get this, rose and are now over 11 million. But as I pointed out, in the past on the show, job openings are really a proxy of the stock market. And here you can see in this chart, job openings total non-farm now over 11 million. The Wilshire 5000 price index in red as the stock market here appears to be making a very large and broad bottom. Notably, job openings head higher and all your seniors employers look at the stock market and say, look, if the market goes up, that means people feel good about things. That means they're gonna go out and spend money. And of course, that remains the question is, will consumers spend? Now let's take a look at what we got from the Fed today. We have a quarter percent rate hike but in the press conference, Powell did not sound confident at all. He raised rates again a quarter percent, said they're going to have further rate hikes, which we can say based on the yield curve, not very probable. And when asked about financial conditions easing, he said, look, we don't look at that as short term because if we did, we would realize that we have no effect on the markets. We look at them in the long term and hope that we are right at some point. Of course, they'll be right if we have a recession. And then he can say, yes, financial conditions tighten. But let's take a quick look at what's going on with the Fed. As recent indicators point to a moderate, modest growth in spending and production, job gains have been robust in recent months, and the unemployment rate has remained low. Inflation has eased somewhat, but remains elevated. It is heading lower, but not as fast as the Fed wants. And that's why they're trying to talk the market into believing more rate hikes are coming, because what the, really the Fed wants is not a recession. They want their credibility restored here to say, look, we raised rates, financial conditions tighten. Can't you people in the stock market figure it out? Well, not just yet. Look for the market to rally. Remember, it's momentum driven, not fundamentals, not earnings, not the Fed. But in all likelihood, this is probably the last hike we'll see out of the Fed for this cycle. And with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.